Hi everyone, I want to make a quick video here to answer this uh, post. The question is, um, the user had um, did a quick test um, making a cylinder in a program called the Hexagon and um, uh, exported the object, did an auto UV mapping using the paint setup wizard, um, saved the object, saved the texture, brought it back in the Hexagon and this was the result. And the result is that the texture doesn't look the way it should. So she can explain what can I did wrong. And the answer is down here after a few things is that uh, apparently Hexagon has a different standard for UV mapping where um, if this is your texture map and we're saying we're associating UV coordinates with this texture map, um, some programs will call this top corner 00, zero and UV space uh, or and some will call it with zero 01, right? And uh, like in the opposite, uh, some will call this zero zero, and or some will call that zero one. So in the uh, in the case of reality paint, this is zero one, and the downward direction indicates uh, V going down from one to zero, and zero going from zero to one. I've never seen a program that had it flipped in U space where it goes backwards. But it's very common to have a different standard for the V coordinate. So if the if all things being said and done, you do a te uh, texture and UV map in one program, you export to the other, you import the texture map, you put it on top of the object, it's going to look upside down. So most programs have an option to import uh, to flip the UV coordinates uh, on import. So that that physically f flips the points in the object. Uh, another option is you can just take the texture map and, and a 2D painting application and, and flip it. But that's not recommended because you're gonna, if you're going back and forth a few times, you'll be flipping it every time and get confused. So I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, but in any case, so okay, questions answered, all fine and dandy. And as we come down here, we can say that uh, but now she imported the texture back into um, hexagon and notices the flipped either way, but that color grid doesn't show up anymore. But if you look at here, you can see this, things aren't lining up, so something went wrong. She said, well, um, what's happening here? So I'm gonna tell you what's happening here. What's happening is that the user got the brush image that was used to put on your brush surface and paint is getting confused with the actual texture map, this guy, that you should be saving out and putting, applying to the surface of the model. So uh, let me just sh uh, do a quick test here and show you what I'm talking about. So we're in Reality Paint. This is the same procedure works for Blacksmith 3D. Um, so, but anyway, I'm gonna load in this object and this has no UV mapping. Um, so if we see here, it says no UV mapping. So there's no way you can paint on this because it, the pixels aren't going anywhere. So what we do is we say shift A to, uh, or control A, sorry, control A to select all, all right? And then we say uh, the utility tools, paint setup wizard, and we can specify width and height I explicitly said a non-power two here, just to show off the fact that the textures don't have to be power two. Many programs make you do that. So anyway, auto UV map is checked, and this is off by default, but I checked it on just to be consistent with uh, what we saw in the question, make color grid in map. That'll take all the empty space and put a colorful grid in it. It makes it easy to uh, visualize the UV mapping. So we execute. Uh, yes, I want to proceed. So here we go. That's the result. And I'm going to here, and I'm also going to managers uh, draw double sided so we can see the back. Okay. Now, if we notice now here, we have a brush image and we want to use this to paint on the surface of that. So we're going to drag and drop that into this box. Um, so yes, and we I'm not going to get too much detail, but uh, once this is loaded, Shift V brings you to brush tile setup. I'm going to do a cylindrical mapping, and let's just 
print this off this side so you can see what's happening. Uh, and since everything is selected with the control A, I can go center to selection. I can say um, f align to selection and frame to selection. And now you'll see the um, uh, the cylindrical mapping and this white box is wrapped around this cylinder. Uh, so uh, yes, and I'm going to make an important point here. This mapping is for this brush image as it gets projected onto the surface of this surface. This is not doing a different UV mapping for the actual object. The UV mapping for the object is still going to look like this. It's going to be, in this case, since it's auto UV mapped, we have all these chunks cut out and placed over a UV space. All right, so uh, that is, it's very important to, to note this distinction. So I'm going to choose a paintbrush. I'm going to say none for hidden surface removal because I just want to paint straight through this object. So I go here, let's hide the menu, push the down arrow to bring it to the front, and I'm going to paint straight through. All right, so this is a cylindrical mapping and it's on a cylinder. So everything's just going to wrap around like that. Okay, so everything is fine and dandy. So I'm going to here um, export the um, okay files uh, the, the export um, the texture I'm going to export the image map first this is often recommended so uh, if you change the file name it'll get of the map it'll get updated in the object so if you export the object it'll know the file name if you export the model first and then the map and you change the name of the map it won't find it so I'm going to say export image maps, then I'm going to say color PNG, or overwrite the last one, and that's fine, okay. And, oh, I had two maps in the scene here, so you'll just have to forgive that. So, let me see, da, 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 da. I'm going to explicitly look at image maps, color one, this is the latest one, export that manually here, and just call that color, all right, and again. So now this is your texture map, not this, okay? So let's delete that old one too, not to get confused. Now, uh, we're gonna export the object. Export OBJ, leave the default options. Okay, cylinder test mapped. Okay, cylinder to test mapped OBJ. And notice there's also an MTL file. Now, say file new. Okay. Now let us pretend this is hexagon for a second because I don't have hexagon. Uh, I'm going to import this OBJ file. So I drag and drop it in, and I'm going to flip the UVs vertically. Okay. And so I'm going to simulate the error that we had in, um, seen in the post. So I'm flipping them, and then it is noticed here, and it loaded the texture as well because it was on the, in the same folder. And we notice that uh, here we go. It looks not what we want, you know, like it's so because the texture map, the UV mappings are flipped based on how we originally painted the map. So the solution is that when you're importing the object into your program, like Hexagon, uh, let's find new again. You want to you want to have an option like this in that program to flip the UVs that came from the original cylinder, not the original, the one that we re UV mapped and you want to flip them to the standard of your destination program. And yeah, and that's all fine, but the problem that was made down here is that the user got this confused and made this the texture map. So I'm going to just bring this in here. I'm going to import it as not as a reference object, as an image image map. And in the materials, I surf surf uh, color and I'm going to change it to brush image. Now, if I look here, see, it's not quite what we want. In this case, you might not even notice that 
um, initially because of these seams, but you look in and it's not lining up properly. And that is because this isn't the texture map. It's the thing you used to make the texture map. So um, where did color, this was the resulting texture map. So in this case, the resulting texture map should look something like this, not something like this, okay? So really you have to dot your I's, cross your T's, and make sure you're using uh, the right files for the right thing. This is a brush image, and this is an image, uh, image map. Uh, we were very deliberate in how we name these things because you can easily just call it all textures. You can say, okay, you put a texture in here and you have a texture on here and you export the texture and you're like, oh, okay, which one's which? So we were very deliberate in how we name this stuff. And so we called this a brush image because it's the image that goes on your brush. This is the image map because it's an image and it's a, like a texture map. But the word texture is misleading because it could be color texture, it can be transparency, it can be any number of things that are just mapped in UV space onto an image. So we called it image map. In any case, you can call it whatever you want as long as you're consistent and you know what's going on. So don't get this mixed up with that. And if your programs have different standards, make sure you flip the UVs and you should be good. So I hope you found this video informative and I'll uh, see you in the next video.